This is a Curvy 3D4 tutorial showing how I made the coat and boots and some other bits of this cowboy. Here's the finished sculpture in Curvy. It's made up of lots of drawn objects, some of which merged together and then sculpted on top. But I'm going to be making these red objects in this tutorial. The coat, the scarf, the grenade and the boot. Let's start off with the scarf. This is made out of a, a lathe object. So in the side view I'm drawing a very ruffled, wiggly line to have all the folds of the scarf. And then the same at the back of the neck. Um, it's a bit twisted at the moment because I drew the curves, one of the curves in the wrong direction. They've both got to be drawn in the same direction. But I can just rotate it back into place. Then I switch to the front view and draw some very tight, small wiggly curves where the cloth is bunched up at the sides. And this gives uh, quite a nice folded cloth effect very quickly. Just turn off the cap ends and turn on double sided. Next, to make the grenade, I just used a sphere, uh, squash the height a bit the height slider and then I added a, a simple curvy map uh, which was basically a white square on a grey background. I'll add this as the image texture as well so you can see what I'm doing. At the moment we're using a quad sphere we want to use a UV sphere. It changes the way the, the quads are mapped around the object. The mapping is much more even with the UV sphere. Then I'm opening the texture placement panel and I'm going to change the, the scale in U and V of the texture to make the right sort of chunks on the side of the grenade, increase the resolution and the curvy map updates as we drag the sliders. So this, this is a very quick way to add detail. Bumps, repeating patterns to an object. And that's basically the finished grenade. Again, very simple and quick to make. The coat is going to take a bit longer. I'm going to draw the overall shape of the coat with a lathe and then cut in the finer shape later. So I'm mirror cloning the curve, then I'm going to draw the front and the back of the lathe. For this coat the front's quite low and the back's quite high. Um, then we can use the, the, curve, the soft move tool to tweak it into place. I turned off cap ends because we don't want the um, ends to be capped, we want this to be a hollow shape. To see what's going on I turned off, turned on alpha blending and dragged down the alpha slider a little bit so I can see the legs through the coat. Again just tweaking this into shape. Well I'm happy with the overall shape. Um, I can get started with cutting. So I need to convert to a, a mesh to cut into it. And then I'll use slice by curve to cut out the gap in the front of the coat. Just draw a line and it selects an area. Uh, delete inner selection to cut it out. And then I've used curve edge boundary, create edge boundary which creates a curve along the edge of a mesh. That's the white line you can see. And I'm going to use that curve on a loft. So the loft, I'm going to draw a tiny little straight line which is basically the along curve for the loft. And then for the across curves I'm going to copy the boundary and paste in two copies of the, the boundary curve, which will control where the loft is placed. 
I just need to scale one of them in and then move it into place with the soft move tool. So because we drew a very short straight curve to start off with, we're going to get that curve swept around the two other curves. Um, when I'm ready, I add some thickness with the thicken command in Curvy 4.1, but you can use depth on the loft. And then I mirror both the coat and the trim to make a symmetrical coat using mesh mirror. I can join these parts together now, which means I can sculpt them as one or edit them as one. I'm going to mask one corner of the coat using gradient mask from the masking options. Uh, control drag a box to um, remove part of the mask using rectangular select. And now with that corner of the coat selected, I can then use the rotate in the top view to twist that coat out of place and then in the side to turn the flap up as if it's blowing in the wind. And because I've joined the coat and the trim, they both move together. So at the moment I've got the problem that at the top of the coat there's not room for the neck. So I'm just going to drag that drag that into position. It'll be covered up by the, uh, the neck scarf anyway. And pull the coat into shape. So now I'm going to draw the shoulder pads. Again, with a, a loft, I draw along the object and then I draw a side. I just rotate that side into position at the start of the sort of the shoulder covering. Use curved clone to make a copy of that side and move that one into position. I'm just going to tighten up the, the shape of the long curve and smooth it off a bit. Uh, now I can just drag and scale these curves into place. Make a copy with Control D and just drag those curves to make a smaller flap on top. And then copy and edit mirror paste to make one, a flap on the other side too. Finally, we're going to look at making this boot. The boot requires a body, so I'm going to draw a quick uh, calf and foot with the, the lathe tool. And just drawing the, the front back and sides of the foot. You can spend longer tweaking these curves. Usually I would have a reference image in the background and I would just trace the shapes I needed so they'd be quite exact. Okay, that's that's roughly the shape of a foot. I'm going to drag the second one onto the first in the groups panel and use weld to parent. Um, and then just quickly use the clay brush to smooth that shape a little. And now we have um, the shoe body. Now we want to make a new sort of layer on top of the, the shoe where the laces go. So I'm going to use slice by curve and draw a, a loop around where I want to slice, making sure to turn off front faces only in the options. 
and then bake that selection. At this point I have to remember to make a copy of the object, so I've got one left over for later. Um, I'm going to invert the mask and delete the rest and this this the sort of the layer we need. I need to slice it again to make a little opening between the laces. Can just move this curve into position to get the slice right. And bake the action. This time I can use delete inner selection to delete the yellow area. If we just pressed it and pressed delete normally, it would delete all the vertices along the edge of the selection as well. Whereas we just wanted the inside bit of the yellow area deleted. Using thicken to add a little depth to that surface layer. Now I'm going to make the laces. Uh, this is an eyelet. Um, and then we're going to draw a lace with the, the line tool. I'm drawing these quite quite deep into the up, up and down or to the back and forward because later on I want to squash them to make flat laces. I copy this and do a mirror clone, paste mirrored, and then just tweak the shape so the laces don't intersect each other. When I'm happy with the laces, I can join them together into a single mesh. Doing mesh join. And then the flattening, so they turn into flat laces. So this gives us one set of laces and eyelets. We want, um, we want lots of sets. So I'm going to join all these pieces together into a single mesh. And then we're going to use the array tool to multiply them up. So the array is a, a proxy tool. So we duplicate by proxy, change the proxy mode to array, change the amount and move the offset. And then we can make uh, a whole set of laces. When we're done, we bake the action. This makes proxies and we bake it again to make meshes and then we join them all together with control J. Sorry, my shortcuts are on. Now we need to fit them to the boot. So I'm going to scale them to roughly the right size. And then use deform fit to rails. Uh, this time we're going to use two rails, one each side of the, the laces. You can do a deform by rails with one rail, but this gives us more control over the, the shape and placement. So we've drawn the uh, guide rails either side of the original object, and then we do the destination rails where we want to place them. Then it's just a matter of moving the, the rails into the right place on the on the shoe. Um, I'm going to move the rails in front of the shoe in preparation for dropping them onto the surface of the shoe. So lining them up in perspective above the surface where I, where I need them. Just tightening up the position of the guide rails. And then when they're roughly in the right place, I use drop to surface, which um, zips them down onto mesh underneath. 
So now those curves are running along the surface. Um, the laces are a bit deeply embedded in the shoe, so I'm moving the original mesh just above the guide rails. Um, they're coming out quite flat, whereas they should be sort of rounded with the shoe. Just trim the end of the curve to remove a bit of noise. So I want to curve the laces to follow the shoe. So I'm going to use the gradient mask tool and the rotate tool to bend the original laces so they they follow a curve. And then I can refresh just by toggling an option on fit to, fit to rails. Moving the original into the right place above the guides. And now the the laces follow the shoe much better. And there's the, the finished laces. And the finished model again. If you want to learn more about Curvy 3D, see my other tutorials.